The killing that tied last year's record took place here on Franklin Avenue before dawn. Police say a 37-year-old New Orleans man stopped to use a payphone. He was approached by two men who apparently tried to rob him. And now this story, Treme Star and New Orleans native Wendell Pierce is pointing to Hurricane Katrina's impact on the city's senseless violence. But as WDSU reporter Simley Jewin tells us, he believes safer streets will only come after the community acknowledges its part in the crisis. New video shows crowds running for their lives just after the deadly mass shooting outside of a nightclub in the Warehouse District. And just minutes ago, Mayor Latoya Cantrell and other city leaders spoke about it for the first time. As we approach the 10th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, police and prosecutors in the city of New Orleans announced the indictment and convictions of two different gangs in the city of New Orleans. Five people were shot on Bourbon Street in New Orleans early this morning. Police say it started as an argument and ended with someone shooting into a crowd. Three men and two women were shot. Police say none of the victim's injuries are considered to be life-threatening. Two people were detained for questioning. The 1980s was a time of economic struggle and social change in New Orleans. The oil bust and recession hit the city hard, leading to increased unemployment and poverty. As legitimate opportunities dwindle, many turn to the illicit economy, giving rise to a surge in criminal activity and gang formation. The economic decline of the 80s created a perfect storm for crime in New Orleans. With limited options, many young people found themselves drawn into gangs, which offered a sense of belonging and financial opportunity, albeit through illegal means. The most infamous criminal organizations formed in the city during the turbulent mid-1980s with the Glen Mess Gang, Sam Clay Organization, Hardy Boys, and the Richard Pena Organization being the most notorious. Other gangs like the Bailey Boys, the Hangtown Organization, the Hot Boys, and the Cut Boys were also active during the 90s. The economic struggles, systemic neglect, and the crack cocaine epidemic gave rise to a violent gang culture 
particularly in the city's housing projects. The housing projects of New Orleans were originally built to provide affordable housing and for low-income families. However, by the 1990s, these areas became synonymous with poverty, crime, and gang violence, overcrowding, lack of economic opportunities, a minimal police presence created a breeding ground for criminal activity. The crack cocaine epidemic of the 1980s and 1990s ravaged in the city communities across the United States. New Orleans was no exception. The lucrative drug trade provided gangs with immense profits, but also escalated violence and rival groups fought for control of the territories and distribution networks. Gangs like the High Boys, which lead the gang national notoriety through rap music, were deeply rooted in the Magnolia Project. They controlled drug trafficking, engaged in violent turf wars, and instilled fear in the communities. Hey yo, I remember one time, it was a block part in the note. KK and Samaj called themselves creeping in the note. So I'm standing on the porch chilling, right? I'm already ticked off because my broad out there in the courtyard pee popping. Now I got one pistol with a bullet in it. One bullet. 38 at me, as a matter of fact. So I'm standing, it's a long driveway. And as soon as you come come out the come the long driveway, when you turn, they got a building right here and a building right across in the courtyard right here. And then you got the circle, right? Why do these guys come around? And walk right past me. I'm standing right in the hallway. I look at it. They walk right past me. So I say, hold up. They going too far. This right after oh, Mosquito Head then got killed. Yeah, this right after that. So they come back there lurking, y'all. Now it's a block portal. Now they don't see me standing in this hallway. They walk right past me. I tell the young boy, I say, listen, he, I say, go get them choppers. Here we got a 223 and he got an SKS with a 75 round drum on it. I say, go over there and go over there and cut. I say, cause they call park right in this back driveway right here. I say, go over there and cut, let off in the air. Everybody gonna run and they gonna run back the way they came. And that's what I'm gonna leave them right there. So everything go as planned. I got another guy with me. I'm not gonna say his name. They start backing up, KK and somebody. They backing up, trying to see where, the, where it's coming from. I step out that hallway with that with that drum, and it wouldn't shoot. There's no cap. 1994 was a year that marked a grim milestone for New Orleans. The city became notorious for its staggering crime rate, earning the unbelievable title, the murder capital of the United States. of just over 400,000, the city saw an unprecedented number of homicides. The official count reached 424 murders, even New Orleans the highest per capita murder rate in the nation, and an astonishing 85.8 per 100,000 residents. Reporting from our newsroom, Don Witt. And as Janet Reno talked about crime in our country, more strikes the streets of New Orleans. This time, it was a robbery that ended in murder. New Orleans police say two men wearing masks and armed with guns entered an automobile stereo shop at 1025 Barone Street around 5.30 tonight. They reportedly ordered five people to the floor, tied them up, and took their wallets. One of the suspects then went into the sales area and shot the victim. His name is not being released. The gunman fled with an undisclosed amount of money. No one else was injured. Police tonight are looking for those gunmen. The 1990s was a turbulent decade for New Orleans public housing. Areas like the Magnolia, Calio, and the St. Thomas became battlegrounds in the ongoing war against drugs, poverty, and violence. The city's housing projects originally built 
We provide affordable homes, became plagued by neglect, corruption, and systemic failures. As conditions deteriorated, crime rates soared, and the projects became notorious for gang activity and violence. Gangs like the Hot Boys and the Gotti Boys and the crew from the Calio and all other projects around New Orleans vied for control over the drug trade, turning the project into war zone, nerf fire with a nightly occurrence, and innocent residents often found themselves caught in the crossfire. The gangs played a central role in the violence. And loosely organized groups controlled various neighborhoods, dealing drugs, and setting up scores with brutal efficiency. Turf wars were common, and the innocent often became collateral damage. <laughs>